As we have seen in the past couple of examples, not all functional relationships are linear, meaning they're not a straight line. Uh, the table below represents the sand fill rate for the pictured vase. Is the sand fill rate a linear or nonlinear function? And explain your reasoning. We're going to think of um, the change in time over the change in fill height. So I see that as each second passes, we increase our fill height by four inches. Since this is a constant rate of change, the function is linear. The following table represents how many miles you hiked per minute. On a recent hiking trip, tell whether you hiked at a constant rate and explain your reasoning. So we're gonna talk about the change in miles over the change in minutes. I see that the miles hiked are increasing at a constant rate of a half mile. However, the minutes hiked are not increasing at a constant rate since we jump 10 minutes, then five, then back to 10. This would be a nonlinear function since we are not hiking at a constant rate. The table below shows the fill rate for a vase. Is the fill rate linear or nonlinear? Take a moment to read the options and select the option that you think is the correct answer, and then we'll talk about it. I see that our minutes, excuse me, our seconds are increasing by one each time. However, our fill height is not increasing at the same amount each time. And so because the output is a variable rate of change, this is nonlinear. The table below shows the fill rate for a vase. Fill in the missing value. This must have a constant rate of change in order for us to find that missing value. So we'll talk about the change in the fill height over the change in time. Looking at the first sets of data, as fill height decreases by 4 inches, time is increasing by 2. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. The same is true for the second and third set of data. The fill height is decreasing by 6 inches, while time is increasing by 3 seconds, giving us negative 6 divided by 3, which is negative 2 inches per second. Therefore, since we are increasing time by one second, we should decrease our fill height from negative 12 minus 2, so it, which is negative 14 inches. Some nonlinear functions do exhibit predictable behavior, and we can describe this behavior. Show two different ways to represent the fourth figure. I see that as each figure is developing, I'm adding another row of dots in the amount of the figure itself. So my fourth figure should have the original dots plus four more. So if I'm looking at the figure number, I count the number of dots, I see that I'm increasing each time by three. So my, we could predict that the fifth figure will have 12 dots. Which of the equations below represents the data table? I know that the inputs are the x value and the outputs are the y values. So I'll use my first equation, y equals x squared minus x minus two by plugging in two for my y value and zeros for my x values. When I simplify, I see that I'll end up with two equal to negative two. So this does not work. We'll try the next equation. I'll plug in zero for my y value and one for my x value, but this time I'll plug it in to point B. Is y equal to one squared minus three times one plus two? Why, yes it is. But we should also check the last equation just to make sure that we didn't, because some points will fit on both equations. So we'll check it just to make sure. So I'll plug in two for my output and is zero squared plus five equal to two? Well, no. So our only option would be option C, excuse me, option B to make this work for us. Now that we know which equation matches, let's fill in the last two remaining outputs using this equation.
So we'll use the equation that we circled using 40 for our input. I'll input 40 wherever I see x so that we can identify our output. So 40 squared minus 3 times 40 plus 2 is 1600 minus 120 plus 2, so 1428. We'll do the same for our input of x. 80 squared minus 3 times 80 plus 2 is 6400 minus 240 plus 2 for 6162. The equation table and graph below look like they are a matched set. The problem is only two of the representations match. Find the two, find the two representations that match and create the third to make a complete matched set. So I have the equation y equals negative four times the absolute value of x, a graph of an absolute value, and a table of input outputs. I can see the table does not match the graph because when I input negative two, I should be at an output of negative eight. So when I input negative two, negative eight should be down here. So right off the bat, the table does not match the graph. Further, is negative eight, when I plug it into my equation, equal to negative four times the absolute value of two? So is negative four times two equal to negative eight? Yes, it is. We should double check another point just to make sure. So is negative four equal to negative four times the absolute value of one, which is negative four times one, which is negative four. So this is the correct match together. So the table and the equation are matching. Therefore, the graph is wrong. So I will create a new graph that matches these points. So now when I plug in, my negative two, I see that it does cross at negative eight. When I plug in negative one, we cross at negative four, zero, zero, one, four, and two, negative eight. Homework, list two points from a line that satisfies the following. You can use numbers zero to five, but you can only use a number once. Write the equation of the line represented by the points. Its rate of change must be larger than 2, its y-intercept must be smaller than 3, and it must share a point with the line described by the rate of change and intercept from A and B. List your points here, again using the numbers only 0 through 5. Finally, write the equation of the line represented by those points. When you have your solution, scan and upload your response to the functions discussion board. Take a moment to view your classmates' responses and make a comment on at least one classmate's solution. Using the whole numbers one through eight, you will choose each number once except for one number that will be used twice as the same coordinate point, such as one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, etc. Find three coordinate points that lie in the same line. Write the equation of the line represented by the three points and have the following requirements. It has a positive slope and the slope is less than one. When you have your solution, scan and upload your response to the write a linear function discussion board. Take a moment to view your classmates' responses and make a comment on at least one classmate's solutions. A student has had a collection of baseball cards for several years. Suppose that B, the number of cards in the collection, can be described as a function of T, which is in time per year, time in years, since the collection was started. Explain what each of the following equations would tell us about the number of cards in the collection over time. When you have your explanation, scan and upload your explanations to the baseball cards discussion board and respond to at least two classmates' explanations if you agree or disagree with their interpretation and why. Finally, put your calculators away because I want to see all your work and your thought processes. Print the homework file included in the Practice Problems Help homework dropbox. Complete the problems as outlined within the homework pages, taking care to show all your work. Scan and upload your documents back into the Practice Problems dropbox.